Well, hello guys. Welcome to another episode of Talking Cinema. Yeah, I know I was a little bit behind. Um, I decided to take a little bit of a break. Um, not done. Just maybe it won't be every week. That way I don't get burned out. And Because I'm starting all this other stuff. I'm, as you can see, if you've been following up on my channel, I've been doing a whole new style of movie reviews, of clips and everything. So that takes a little bit of time to edit longer than it did the other reviews. So it's not just something I just do the review and then upload it. I edit some stuff in and so forth. And I'm also doing VHS 365. So, you know, which pretty much isn't any much more work than the other reviews that I'm doing. Unless I have to rip the VHS because I can't find it anywhere online. But anyway, um, as you can see here, I'm on Fangoria's website. Uh, sadly... Their back issues burned down in a shitty warehouse fire years ago. Um, so I would love to have a bunch of Fangoria issues. This is old news. As you can see June 24th. Pretty old news. But I didn't get around to covering it in the last uh, installment. And I wanted to because I wanted to talk about this bullshit. I'm sorry. It, for people who like Leprechaun movies, that's cool. To each their own. That's perfectly fine if you like the Leprechaun films. I don't have anything wrong with that. There's, I have no issues. But in my opinion, there's series that deserve more features than this. Critters deserved a box set with features before Leprechaun did. That's how I feel. I think the Critters movies deserved it a lot more than this film did. Same thing for Tremors. I think the Tremors series deserved a box Blu-ray set with features and in-depth features and documentaries and so forth and commentaries more than Leprechaun. In my opinion, Leprechaun movies fucking suck. They're not funny. They're not scary. They're, they just suck. I, I don't understand the appeal of Leprechaun films. I never will. I never even got around to finishing reviewing the series because I started and then I got to stupid... Just I had enough of the stupid shit and I quit. Okay, I could not take it anymore. So I said, I'd rather do better things in my life than watch shitty Leprechaun movies. But yeah, here comes a four-disc collector, collector edition box set of Leprechaun movies on September 30th, where you get on Blu-ray and high definition, you get Leprechaun and Leprechaun 2, and you get audio commentary on Leprechaun. An audio commentary on Leprechaun 2 with the director. Making a feature right on Leprechaun and Leprechaun 2, but never before some behind scenes footage of photos. Yeah, fucking Leprechaun and Leprechaun 2. Yeah, I need to know how they did those amazing special effects that weren't amazing at all. That were not nearly as good. I would take a Night of the Demons box set with features, a, a Sleepaway Camp box set redone with features and more features. Than this fucking series. I don't get it. I don't understand. They have did then you've disc two as Leprechaun three and Leprechaun four in space. And audio commentary on Leprechaun three and four by Brian Trencher Smith. And making a feature read on Leprechaun three and four. Wow. You could all the fucking making of Leprechaun if you know behind the scenes that you could ask for. I don't get it. Don't understand. Why? There's some movies that aren't even released in the US. And this shit gets a fucking box set. With a fucking boatload of features for some reason. Why not really? Re, why not release Necronomicon Book of the Dead finally in the United States? That would be a good idea, you know. I don't know. I feel I'm the only one who's seen, seen that anthology movie with some excellent effects. Would I actually want to know how they did? How they did those effects? That's a great movie compared to these shitty Leprechaun movies. So now we got Disc 3. We got Leprechaun in the Hood. Leprechaun Back to the Hood. We got an audio commentary on Leprechaun in the Hood. An audio commentary and Leprechaun Back to the Hood by director Stephen Aromuli. And then we got to make it a feature on Leprechaun in the Hood and Leprechaun 2 Back to the Hood because you needed to know how they made those sh pieces of shit. Then we got Leprechaun, then we got Disc 4, Leprechaun Origins with fucking Hornswoggle and then more featurettes. Yeah, shell out 40 bucks for this shit, not doing it. I don't care. Who, why? I don't get it. I don't understand. Fuck you, Leprechaun. Get the fuck out of my face. Why not, let's get Moontrap released in the U.S. finally. I know it was released in Germany. I heard the transfer was kind of shitty. But just fucking, just get in the U.S. already. So I'll buy that and see the features on that. Instead of this fucking shit. Uh, how about the Blob? How about the 1988 Blob? Oh, I heard Twilight Time might be asking Chuck Russell for a commentary track. Yeah, I'm not holding my fucking breath. Especially with Twilight Time. But, 
Really? How about that? Instead, no, no, we got the fucking Leprechaun movies, because Leprechaun movies, we need to have them in a high-definition box set with features. You know what's fucking bullshit about this? The Child's Play franchise doesn't have as much overspanning features for every movie. You know, the Child's Play franchise, you only have the first film. You have Bride of Chucky maybe has some features. Same thing for uh, Curse of Chucky. Fucking piece of shit, chili, chili swallowing fucking garbage. Which, if you like Curse of Chucky, D. Cerrone, I thought that movie was fucking terrible. With some of the lamest, shittiest kills in the entire franchise. Chucky tried to kill somebody with car exhaust. Doesn't get any lazier than that. And so, you have features on that disc, probably. And you have features on uh, C to Chucky. But not nothing for Child's Play 2. And nothing for Child's Play 3. Now, Child's Play 2 has no features. But Leprechaun 2? Fuck yeah! We give a commentary track and a goddamn documentary. Fuck you, Leprechaun. And go fuck yourself. So then I just also wanted to show this this little bit here. Um, that a friend of mine pointed out. This fun picture here. I'm a huge fan of the Monster Squad, these guys know. And look at this. Look who that is. It's, 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 maybe I zoom in a little bit. That is Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. That actually is Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas with the Monster Squad. That is some crazy shit. That is some crazy shit. That's really cool, though, too. That's some really cool stuff. So, hey, hey, I don't always talk about negative stuff on this show. There's something really cool. Now, here's one more thing I'm going to start bitching about. Because I, I just I have to. This is the list somebody set up of the movies that are included on the 50 best horror movies you've never seen documentary from Shock Till You Drop. Now, it's in backwards order. It's in uh, number 50 was number one in the film. But I, I don't really care because this list is full of shit. I, it's my opinion. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it out there. My opinion, this list is full of shit because of what it's called. This documentary is called The 50 Best Horror Movies You've Never Seen. Maybe this should be titled to The 50 Best Horror Movies That People in the Mainstream Have Never Seen. Or, or, or The 50 Best Horror Movies that's, That People on the Street Have Never Seen. The majority of the people on the street that you interviewed for your whatever documentary or, or I don't know what their criteria was. But any any list that has fucking Valentine on it. I'm sorry. Valentine with shitty kills and a shitty ridiculous looking killer. He looks like a goddamn cherub. And they even said that, oh, it looks really cool. It's a cool design. He looks like a fucking cherub. Is he going to shoot an arrow in my heart and make me fall in love? And then a shitty twist ending. That movie's shit. So there are some movies on here that are good. And I'm, I'm fine with them being chosen as underrated or overlooked. But this is not underrated or overlooked. This is best horror movies you've never seen. Which about 94% or more than that of these horror films are horror films that I've seen. That a lot of horror fans have seen. Basket Case. Seen it. When a Stranger Calls, I've seen that. Silent That Deadly Night, seen that. Like that movie. I like these three movies. They're not horror movies you've never seen. Especially Basket Case, because it has three fucking movies. So right off the bat, I don't think that should be in the criteria for the best horror movie you've never seen. When a Stranger Calls. If you call yourself a horror you fan, I, I don't know. I'm not going to be the guy who says it's true before fans. I don't do that shit. Because it's up to interpretation. But majority of people I know who are big horror fans have seen When a Stranger Calls. Okay? And it had a remake. Piece of shit remake, but it had a remake. I don't get why that's on this list. Sound That Deadly Night. Don't know why. That has five movies and it has a recent remake. It's not a movie that you haven't seen. People know about Sound That Deadly Night. Summer Party Massacre. Seen it. I've seen all three of them. There's a box set you can buy with all three of those movies. It's not something that horror, it's not a horror film you've never seen. Valentine, people haven't seen it because it sucks. That's why. People didn't watch Valentine because it sucked ass. Grace, never saw it. Another kind of baby movie, so killer baby movie, so that might count. Okay, The Hunger. Eh, alright. I could give you that. That's a Tony Scott movie a lot of people don't talk about. Prophecy. I like it. I think it's alright, but I would not put it on a top 50 list. It's okay. The Dentist. 
yeah, okay, that's fine. The dentist, that's all right. But you know, a lot of these that are on this list were already on a better list that had twice as much movies on it in a book called The Fangoria's 101 Most Unheralded Horror Films. Do yourself a favor if you're curious about finding horror films that you haven't seen, that you, you know, want to be interested in. Go pick up that book or go look up that list because it has all pretty much all the ones that they have listed here and then ones that deserve to be listed. Because shit like Food of the Gods does not deserve to be on this list. Food of the Gods with its shitty laughable effects and I swear to God, it, they do not hold up at all nowadays. That You might as well just put Naw Food of the Gods 2 on there while you're at it too. Food of the Gods is not a best horror film you've never seen. I wouldn't. It's not even scary. It's shitty, laughable effects with bad acting and a stupid idea about some growth formula that makes chickens and roosters and rats of enormous size and attack people. You might as well just had Night of the Lepus on there about the killer fucking jackrabbits. Motel Hell? Okay, alright, I'll give you that. Wrong Turn? No! Why not? Because it has four fucking sequels. It's not a horror film people have never seen. If it was a horror film people have never seen, it wouldn't have four fucking sequels. It's a good movie. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't have four fucking sequels if you've never seen it. The Fury. Okay, I'll give you that. Although I really don't see it as a horror film. I kind of see it as more like a suspense movie. There's a few horror elements here and there, dealing with psychic abilities and so forth. But okay, alright. April Fool's Day. Thank you. Alright. That's great. Actually looking at it, on that's one I have to commend them for. Okay, Humanoids from the Deep. Okay. I guess. I thought it was okay. I wouldn't put it on my top 50. Hatchet. Another one. No. Why? That's not a horror film you've never seen. It came out in 2006, and it also has two sequels. What do you mean it's a horror film you've never seen? I swear to God, the sequel, I think, came out a year ago or two years ago. That's bullshit. It shouldn't even be on this list. May? Good visuals. I think it's a little bit overrated, but to each their own. Lamora? Okay, it's fine, because I haven't seen that movie, so... Bang! Wow! We actually found one I haven't seen on this list. Oh, there's two. Okay. Like Grace and Lamora. Okay, alright. Brides of Dracula. I'm not even going to bother. I'm not even going to bother with that movie. It doesn't look like much. But I haven't seen it, so there you go. There's three. Three out of 50. Exorcist 3. Okay. I can agree with that being on the list. People should talk about that more. Alright, I understand that. That's why I think the list shouldn't have been 50 best horror movies you've never seen. It should have been 50 underrated or overlooked horror films. Because you've never seen is a really dumb title in my opinion. Because there's it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter if you think the people who are interviewed on the show, documentary, think that people haven't seen these movies. There's a shit ton of people who have seen these movies. I, this is a problem. It... it, it you can't really say that. It's a blanket statement. Burnt offerings. All right. Okay. Nobody really talks about that haunted house flick. Okay. All right. The fun house. Eh. Won't be on my list, but I've seen it. Howling 3. Nice. Show some praise to that. It's good. But a lot of people have actually seen that. A lot of people have seen these movies. Especially if you're talking to the core fan base who's going to watch this documentary, who are horror fans. They have seen probably every single movie on your list. Hard Candy. I've seen that. Decent. I don't know if I'd call it a horror film. But decent. Castle Freak. Okay, alright. And also, like I said earlier about the Fangoria list, I meant it. Seriously. I can go right... Th I can tell you right now which ones are on that... That are talked about in that book. When a Stranger Calls. The Dentist. Off the top of my head. The Humorous from the Deep. Uh, Motel Hell, Exorcist 3. How I, I don't think Halloween 3 was mentioned in that one. Uh, Castle Freak. People have seen that movie. I mean, it's a Stuart Gordon film and it, one of Full Moon's well, better well-known flicks. The movie had a goddamn action figure. Okay, people have seen that movie. Feast? People have seen that movie. You know why? First off, it was it was started off as a documentary called Project Greenlight, and people saw the show, so they saw the behind the scenes of the movie, then they saw the movie. Okay? And it has two sequels. So people saw Feast, Slither. People saw the movie. Uh, just because uh, it didn't wasn't a hit, people have seen Slither. 
especially horror fans, inside. Fuck that movie. I'm never watching it. I heard about it. I don't need to see it. Tourist Trap. Okay, all right. Trilogy of Terror. If you're a horror fan, you've seen Trilogy of Terror. You know about the Zuni fetish doll. You know about it. You know about Karen Black's performance. You know about all that. I'm just saying, if they're trying to make this video appeal to diehard horror fans, they're doing those their horror fans a disservice because they're including a bunch of mainstream titles that horror fans, diehard horror fans, I've already seen. And we'll debate this list to the end of time and be like, wait, I've seen that movie. So the, that's why it should not have been called the 50 best horror movies you've never seen. Splinter. I haven't seen it yet, but I want to. So I, I guess that's one I haven't seen yet. Session 9. Want to check that out. Ginger Snaps. Has a bunch of sequels. Has a cult following. People have seen that movie. And people have seen Ginger Snaps. I've seen Ginger Snaps. It was on the Fangoria list. I've seen it. Alice Sweet Alice. Saw it. Wasn't the biggest fan of it. Willing to give it another chance. But I saw it. Visiting Hours. Saw it. Not impressed. Repulsion. Classic. That's not something nobody's ever seen. That's considered a classic by multiple different critics and multiple different people. And a lot of people point that. Some people actually point to that as one of their favorite movies. And Roman Polanski's best film. That's not something people have never seen. Alone with her. No, I haven't seen it. I'll give I'll give the movie that. Because it looks like shit. Just by the cover art. I'll judge a book by its cover. It looks like a really cheap horror film. Really cheap slash direct to be a slasher. Near dark. Near dark. Seen it. Joshua, never seen it. Doesn't look like anything. I'd be interested in it. Don't be afraid of the dark. Saw it. Audition. Saw it. Overrated. Let the right one in. Overrated. Saw it. And how is that something you've never seen? It got a remake. An audition is something a lot of people have seen too. Reanimator. Why the fuck is this on the list? And then by the by this film stand by this list standards, this would be uh seven, eight, eight, seven. It would be number six on the list. Reanimator. People have seen Reanimator. Newsflash. Shock till you drop. People have seen Reanimator. A lot of people have seen Reanimator. A lot of horror fans have seen Reanimator. When people think about Jeffrey Combs, they think about Reanimator. You should have had From Beyond on there. I would buy that more than Reanimator. That has a sequel. That has Brighter Reanimator. It has another sequel. It has Beyond Reanimator. It has a trilogy. Okay, people have seen Reanimator. People know about Reanimator. That's bullshit. There's no reason for that to be on this list. Wishmaster. That's another one. Why? Why is that on the list? Didn't have three sequels? People know about Wishmaster. People remember Wishmaster. The Descent. People sure as fuck remember that movie. What? Back in the day when they gave it good reviews, they suddenly forgot? No. And they had a shitty sequel recently. People remember The Descent. Alone in the Dark. I'll give you that one. I will. Alright, and I really like that one. That's one that Fangori, but for, hey... Hey, shock to a drop. Fangoria's book beat you to it. Night of the Hunter. What? The original Night of the Hunter? Are you serious? People remember that movie. A lot of people remember that movie. I remember that movie. I saw that in film class. A lot of people remember that fucking movie. This, I don't even, The Beast Within. Really? The Beast Within is your number third, number three on your list. A movie that's just so so at best and has some effects that don't really hold up that well about a guy who his mother was raped by a fucking insect creature and then like he turns into a monster that's your number three of the best horror films you've never seen the reason why beast within is on that list is because it's just okay it's not anything that's mind-blowingly awesome if i showed that movie to anybody if i showed that to my best friend right now he'd be like eh. Or he might think it sucked. It's not a movie that I'll be like, yeah, Beast Within, top three, Pumpkinhead. Why? Why is Pumpkinhead on this list? Just like Reanimator, Wishmaster, Descent, like a 50, about 50, about close to almost all 50 of these goddamn titles. Why is Pumpkinhead on this list? Pumpkinhead is not a movie horror film you've never seen. And Pumpkinhead is a horror film that a lot of horror fans have seen. A lot of people who haven't even aren't even big horror fans have seen Pumpkinhead. Had to have. It got a sequel. Got a shitty video game. It got an, it got two more sequels on the Sci-Fi Channel. And it's getting a Scream Factory release coming up soon. Don't give me that crap. Shock to a drop. People have seen that movie. And Black Christmas. That's another one people have seen. Okay. A lot of horror fans have seen Black Christmas. Me included. They included as one of their favorite horror films. So. 
I don't get it. You could have tried harder. I don't know. I don't know what your selection process was, but in my opinion, it was fucked up. And I'd still watch the documentary to listen to what kind of bullshit they're trying to spew about it. But in my opinion, this list is full of shit. I made my own list. I did. And sometime, I will do my own video talking about little short, quick reviews of the movies that I have on my list, which is a lot more than 50. I got six pages of movies that I feel horror films that I feel are underrated and overlooked and I will explain why and so forth in a future video and I think I'll split them up into separate installments and so forth and that'd be kind of fun maybe I put in a little clips here and there we'll see we'll see we'll see what I feel like doing but anyway or maybe I'll do a whole video make my own documentary make my own big thing whatever talking about my my pick for the best horror movies that underrated, most underrated, underlooked, unheralded horror films. I have to do that myself. Because I'm, I'm not just going to choose random sh pick shit out of a hat. A lot of horror films, a lot of horror fans remember, like Reanimator and Pumpkinhead. Give me a fucking break. Those are not movies we haven't seen. So anyway, I'm done with that. We're going to get into, and uh, excuse us, there's probably some background stuff going on. My parents are watching some TV, so I wanted to do this video, though, tonight, today, so I felt like it. But anyway, Hellboy 3 would happen, except Hollywood won't give Guillermo del Toro any money. Of course not. No. If this is a sequel, he would love to do. But it said that yeah, Pacific Rim 2 will make that happen. But to be honest, I'd rather see Hellboy 3 any day of the week over Pacific Rim the sequel. Hellboy 2, I saw in the theater, and I thought it was really good. I saw it, it got railroaded by, by the Dark Knight like every other movie when the Dark Knight came out. That's the main reason why it wasn't a hit, in my opinion. The first Hellboy was a surprise hit. The sequel would have done better. If Dark Knight didn't just steamroll over it. And there's still a fan base for Hellboy films. There's still people who go see Hellboy movies. And even Del Cora credits the fact that Hellboy 2 The Golden Army was even made to, to the huge showing the film has had in its video incarnation. Show something with two replicate the eventual DVD release. Forcing the market involved into one where it doesn't cut anymore, so at least most of Del Toro believes. And then he already has an idea for a story that he'd like to do. The idea was for it to have Hellboy finally comes to term in terms of the fact that his destiny, his inevitable destiny, is to become the beast of the apocalypse, and having him and Liz face the sort of this that part of his nature, and he has to do it in order to become able to ironically vanquish the foe that he has to face in the third film. He has to become the best of the apocalypse to be able to defend humanity, but at the same time he becomes a much darker being. It's a very interesting to the series, but I don't think it will happen. Why not? Please! I would love seeing that sequel. I would love seeing that idea. That's great. He has to become the the you know beast of the apocalypse in order to save humanity. That's a great that's a really great compelling idea. Hollywood, why not? Just get your head out of your ass and give him some money to make that movie. That's bullshit. That sucks. We'll get Pacific Rim too. And I like this guy. But hey, we just got Pacific Rim sequel coming soon. It's gotta be worth something, right? I agree with the angry troll here. One time I'll ever agree with somebody named the angry troll. No, it's not. I trade a thousand Pacific Rims for Hellboy 3. Same here. But we give more money to Michael Bay for his crappy Transformers movies. Yay. North Korea is complaining about to the United Nations about the interview. Oh, because Kim Jong-un can't take a joke. Here's his quote. He says it's terrorism by the U.S. To allow production and distribution of such a film that the assassination of a company of head of sovereign state should be regarded as the most undisguised sponsoring of terrorism, as well as an act of war. It's a fucking joke, you goddamn fucking dictator moron. Sorry, Kim Jong-un, you ain't censoring my ass with the stu making everybody have your stupid haircut. Screw you, screw North Korea. No, not necessarily all of North Korea, because there's probably some people in North Korea are nice guys and nice gals. But screw you. 
take a goddamn joke. It's a joke. You should be flattered. Not, it's an act of war. What an act of war will send Rainbow after your ass. But no, we're not going to do that. So, we're just making a comedy. Okay, it's a satire. Get over it. It's not an act of war. There's no one in the United Nations that's going to look at it as an act of war. In fact, everyone in the UN is laughing their ass off at you, Kim Jong-un. They're laughing. They're laughing till they piss themselves. Because it's just ridiculous that you even assume shit like that. Ooh, a satire movie is, is an act of war. <laughs> an act of war? Oh my god, terrorist act, really? A comedy in the United States? No wonder people can't take you seriously outside of North Korea. You delusional despot. Anyway, watch this groundbreaking animated short from legendary Disney artist. Uh, no, because Disney will flag this video, so I won't even bother. Dakota Johnson become forever interrupted. I don't really care. Well, it's Fantastic Four. I don't care. I I've never been the biggest fan of the Fantastic Four, and I don't know, the last two movies sucked. I'll wait for a trailer, but I don't have anything to be excited about yet about it. Fast and Furious 7 shuts down car stunt scene for being too dangerous. Okay. Dawn of the Planet of the Dawn of the Planet of the Dead of the Planet of the Apes opens to 4.1 million on Thursday. This still looks fake to me. I'm sorry. It does. You know what looks more real? Huh. Uh Real apes, like in Link, or Project X, or or apes and the ape suits in Congo, or or how about the the ape suits, the gorilla suits that Rick Baker did for Gorillas in the Mist that were so convincing that real gorillas thought they were real gorillas. The best critic in the world couldn't tell the difference because the best critic of of, of a gorilla or a realistic ape is an actual ape, an actual ape. Couldn't tell the difference between the makeup, make between the makeup effect, you know, between the animatronic gorilla suit and gorillas in the mist, versus a real ape. I'm pretty sure a real ape would tell the difference between a goddamn CGI ape if you found a way to make that hologram appear in the ape's enclosure. The ape wouldn't be falling for that shit. I don't know why we cannot be even more advanced now with makeup and, and animatronics to the point where they can do all these things that these other apes, CGI apes are doing. What, the CGI apes are holding guns? We can't have practical effects for that? We gotta have CGI. Because we have to have Andy Circus, who looks fucking weird. He doesn't look like any chimpanzee or ape I've ever seen because he has a human face and then they just kind of just messed it up and made it look ape-like. It's, it's, it's kind of disconcerting. But at the same time, I haven't seen Rise of the Planet of the Apes, so I can't really say much about it. I can't say much about Dawn of the Apes. But it's not about zombie apes, and that's what I'd rather see. So, But I've heard bad things about Rise. I've heard some stupid shit about Rise. It's a stupid plot. But I'll see about that soon enough. Because I'm thinking about maybe watching the Planet of the Apes movie sometime soon. Get that out of the way. So, so you heard it here first. Ape movies. I'm going to go ape sometime soon. Anyway, Gary Oldman joins Kevin Costner in Hilarious Sound and Thriller Criminal. A GIF review. So we're doing a review in GIFs now. Star Wars reveals the Comic Clan. I don't care about Comic Con plans because they can't afford to go to the Comic Con. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles motion posters have arrived. Motion posters. Goody. That's my boy Rap. Smashing fucking humbees and looking like a fucking troll from Cat's Eye. Lovely. I don't even watch it. I'm not I'm done. I'm not watching any more of these shitty motion posters. I'm not doing it. He looks like he's gonna rape me. He's got rape eyes. And actually what look, he's got one green eye and one blue. What's up with the, what's up with that Leo? I don't understand Leo. What's going on, Leo? What's up with your eyes? And why why is it from shitty lighting on a goddamn Facebook filter? Ugh, ugly as fucking turtles. Fucking nerdy Donatello. He's screaming because he looks stupid now. Donnie's screaming because he's like, No! Can't believe they did this to me! That made me look like one of the nerds for Revenge of the Nerds. No! 
Maze Runner scribe recruited the right legion. I don't care about fucking Maze Runner. I don't care about these young adult books. Not their... Not a teenage girl. Fast and Fear 7 Raps production with a love letter to Paul Walker and its fans. Excuse me. There's a time when we didn't know how we could go on, or even if we should, but we listened to you, and you inspired us not only to keep going, but to try and make the best Fast and Furious movie yet. Our Fast family has been together for almost 15 years now, and has grown a lot in that time. From the start, Vin has been our leader who feels what's right for Fast and is in his gut and in his heart. When we had to stop production last year, Vin gathered us back together and moved us forward when we needed it the most. He led us to this day. Some of us have been here from the very beginning. Vin, Michelle, Jordana, and our producer, Neil, all go back to the, that first little movie we shot on the streets of L.A. We came back to L.A. in Fast 7. It was an especially emotional homecoming for those who have grown up with each other since that first shoot. There are those we count as brothers and who have gathered along the way and are with us again. Dwayne, Tyrese, Luda, Lucas, and our writer, Chris. We've got some new additions this time, and Jason, Kurt, D Digimon, Nathalie, Nath Nath Nathalie and our director James. Caleb and Cody joined us to honor their brother and help complete his work. Our family is big and strong, but it won't ever be quite whole again without Paul. All of us, those who have been here from the start and those who were first fast, fast, all those who have been here from the start and those whose first fast film is seven, wanted to create a special film for him and for you. We believe we have. Okay. All right. Rest in peace, Paul. Rest in peace. I got it. I'll give it a look. You know, I'm a little bit skeptical. You know, skeptical because you know the whole maybe they're trying to do CGI of Paul Walker and so forth. But I'll give it a look. Out of the, out of respect for Paul and his memory. And um, but I think this should be the last Fast and the Furious. I don't think there should be another one. I think should this should be it. Goosebumps, The Giver, Goonies, and more highlights at San Diego Comic-Con. Okay, so we're Goonies something. The Giver. Goonies Never Say Die. With the announcement that a sequel to beloved 1985 Goonies is on the way, Goonies cast members explore how it became an iconic movie that an entire generation why the film was to the test of time. Can somebody record that? I hope somebody does. That'd be good. I'd watch that. Somebody probably will. Keep my eye out for that. Reese Witherspoon tests her nerve and wild. The wild trailer. I don't really care for the wild. Expendables 3 TV spot. I have to admit, I saw some Expendables 3 stuff. I did. I don't understand the use of the stroke maybe. Sly, that was, that was a lame motion poster. Just seemed like you were just circle jerking yourself there. Look at me. Look at me smoke my cigar. I'm explosive. <laughs> this is like, okay. All right, Sly. All right, man. Okay. Anyway. I, um, I saw the latest trailer. I know it's PG-13, but if it's anything like Fast 6... I think it might be good. And I'm going to give it, I'm going to give Expendables 3 a chance. I like the last trailer I saw. I like the energy it had. It captured the vibe of the first film again. It wasn't trying to be tongue in cheek and silly. So we'll see. And a TV spot I saw, Wesley Snipes did do something. So, okay, we'll hopefully we'll see more of that. But I'm going to give Expendables 3 a shot. I'm going to be like the only one in my group of friends is going to do it, but I'm going to do it. Angelina Jolie is inspiring a broken trailer. I didn't bother watching that. Not because it might not be good. It's because probably already have enough copyright claims in this video. I wasn't expecting the Expendables 3 thing to show up when I just clicked on the link. Michael Keaton's Birdman will open the Venice Film Festival. Well, will it come in stateside? Will I be able to see it over at my end? Because I want to see that movie because I'm a big fan of Keaton. And I really like the trailer. So we'll see. Hopefully it comes out near my way. Um, just like the Ghostbusters 30th anniversary re-release, which I um, 
saw the new trailer Sony edited for it. Looked really good actually, but it's a problem. It's only in like over 700 theaters. So hopefully one of the 700 theaters that shows the 4K remastering Blu-ray re-release of Ghostbusters in August, at the end of August, is near my way. I would hope so. You know, knowing that I'm a huge ghost head and everything, and, you know, I've been so since I was a kid. Did feature-length reviews of both movies. I'd love to watch the first film in the best quality it's ever been seen in the theater. But we'll see. Um, we'll see. Fingers crossed. The show's in my, near my area. Doomsday may appear in Batman vs. Would you just stop it with... just? It's like Justice League the movie. The prequel to the Justice League. And now it's Batman vs. Superman and Doomsday and Flash and then Green Lantern and fucking Wonder Woman. It's like... Just stop it. You're blowing your load way too early, DC. You're blowing it. You're fucking losing it, man. You're blowing it too early. Jurassic World Velociraptor photo. Mystery deepens. Well, I can't see the photo. It was leaked. But he pulled his Twitter and said, I'm sorry. Okay, great. So I was just wasting my time. I saw the latest Guardians of the Galaxy trailer. That looks like a lot of fun. I really do want to see that. Alec Baldwin joined Mission Impossible 5. I don't care about Mission Impossible 5 because I didn't like Mission Impossible 4. Ian McKellen as Sherlock Holmes. So it's a new Sherlock Holmes movie. But with Ian McKellen. Okay. So he's elderly and retired. Okay, interesting. Interesting. I give that a look sometime. I won't see it in the theater, but interesting just because Sherlock Holmes related. I really like Sherlock Holmes. The character, I really like the movies. Don't give a shit about the Hunger Pains. Longest movie ever ever made 720 hours long what a pretentious waste of fucking time I'm not sitting down and watching a movie for 720 hours you gotta be fucking kidding me Disney's working a live action Dumbo remake yeah cause everybody's asking for that Star Wars Episode 7 is filmed with IMAX cameras. Woohoo! I like Anthony Mackie, okay? I do. And I don't want to sound like a racist asshole here. But I just don't think he'd be a good Captain America. I'm fine with the whole thing of making Bucky Cap again, you know, to replace Chris Evans, if need be. I like that idea, because that's actually what happened in the comics. I don't remember Falcon ever taking over for cap but until recently because there's a younger Captain America because it decided we got to get younger in new Marvel comics because of Captain America number 25 where it's a younger Captain America so <laughs> excuse my mom I don't know I don't know she's Talking about watching Kitchen Nightmares and berating the people who own the restaurant. Uh, <laughs> Eddie Mackey, you want to be the big screen Captain America? I hope not. I like him. I like him. I thought he was gray as Falcon and Captain America Winter Soldier. But I just don't think he'd work as Cap. Maybe he'll prove me wrong. Maybe he'll prove me wrong. So if that's the direction they'll go, I'll, I'll, I will welcome with open arms and give it a shot. But I'm, I'm, off, I'm, I'm not... I would say I'm not that optimistic if that's the choice they're going to go for. Live like one of the Royal Tenenbaums. I don't really care. So it's just long to play Mob Killer and Scarpa. I read this. I want to. I want. To, I want him to do this. This is a nice direction for him to take his career. 
He can't do the action hero guy role for ever. And he's, I think Stallone is one of the most underrated actors working in Hollywood. He did an amazing job in Copland and he got screwed by the Academy and given us, he didn't even get a single Oscar nomination for that performance. And he was excellent in that. He outacted everybody in that movie, including Robert De Niro and Ray Liotta when he was still considered a good actor. And he outacted everybody in that goddamn movie. He was excellent in Copland. In my opinion, Copland was a better film than L.A. Confidential, and that swept. That was the Oscar, big Oscar winner that year. Copland was just completely ignored by the Academy, which that was bullshit. If it wasn't, I think Stallone, if he at least got a nomination, I think he would have taken his career in that direction. But that's not what happened. So he was stuck in direct to video land after Copland and eventually had to bring out Rambo and Rocky to resurrect his career. So. <laughs> ah. Yep. More cameos there. My mom is definitely mad at these people and kitchen nightmares. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, he's he brought back his career, and with Rambo and Rocky, resurrected it, and um, that was because he couldn't do the probably direction he wanted to take it at that point. He probably was thinking about doing the whole Clint Eastwood serious sort of directing or maybe acting, and then in his career in that type of vein. But Copland wasn't a hit. Copland didn't get anything. So he basically brought back Rambo and Rocky. So now that that's starting to, that well is starting to run dry, I really think that he should try the uh, character work or uh, drama work like more. He did that and he's doing something called Reach Me where he's playing an older mentor type. And I like this idea about playing Gregory Scarpa a uh, former mob hitman who claimed he claimed he killed 50 men before dying in incarceration in 1994 of age-related complications. Scarpa was a pretty nasty guy, though some people feel that way for different reasons. The world, especially the law enforcement world, knows him as a murderer who very likely killed his own biological family. As a grim reaper, he disposed of his enemies for the Colombo mob family, though he also apparently called himself the Killing Machine. Guy, yeah, you've already got one creepy nickname. No need to give yourself two. Of course, later in life, he rolled over, becoming an FBI informant. So, you know, spoiler alert. Of course. So, Stallone is playing someone with both something of a moral arc as well as an ego. He just trades notes with Michael Shannon, who played mob capo Richard Kalinske in Millennium's The Iceman. Which, I've never seen any of his movies, so I don't really know what to say about those two films. But, they might be good. But anyway... As I said before, I think Stallone is one of the more underrated actors working in Hollywood. And I would be interested in that project because it would give him, a, give him an ability to stretch his acting muscles, which a lot of people don't think he has. So I hope he does go for that because that would give him a chance to extend his career past his old age and possibly give him a door into directing more dramatic roles, much like Clint Eastwood did. And I think he's a good director, too. And I think he's, he's equally capable as Clint Eastwood was in terms of delivering those type of performances. Think about it. Clint Eastwood, for before he did stuff like Million Dollar Baby and stuff, he was doing stuff like The Rookie and Dirty Harry and some Western movies. It's not like Clint Eastwood was ever this guy you would point to as the Academy Award winning actor in the beginning of his career. Salone was actually nominated for an Oscar for Rocky when he first started his career. So, he started out as an Oscar nod, and since then he hasn't gotten anything. He's become a joke to some people, which I don't agree with, and with the social, I oh, use subtitles, ha ha, you can't understand what he's saying, which I think is ridiculous. Um, I think he just is a mumble mouth. But in my opinion, Stallone, even though I may disagree with some of his decisions lately, maybe I think some of his movies lately was sucked, and I'm never going to lose respect for the man because he has been able to live the American dream. Stallone is an inspiration to me and in my opinion should be an inspiration to all of us to what can happen when you approach, when you reach that goal, when you go for your dream. 
you know, Stallone had many opportunities. He could have just quit. He could have just quit his dream of acting and could have just kept working this dead-end job. But he didn't want to do that. He never gave up. He never gave in. He never surrendered. And even when he was offered more money than he's ever seen in his life to sell the screenplay to Rocky, he didn't do it. Because he said, I want to be Rocky. This is my character. And Stallone, in many ways, is a real-life Rocky. He is. He was a once one in a million one one shot, you know. A nobody who became a, a, a sensation. And that in itself is an inspiration. People like him and Van Dam. Van Dam is much a similar story, who started out with nothing and had these big dreams and and aspirations and was able to, by the grace of God and the ability and had the ability, innate ability to do so, of course, but by the grace of God, and the abilities that God gave him, and the doors that were open, he was able to reach that goal. So Stolen and Van Damme are able to reach those goals. Now, I think that's what a lot of people today should be looking up to, is someone like Stallone or Van Damme. Yeah, Van Damme is messed up. No doubt about it. Stallone's not perfect either. But instead of a sports star, instead of Kobe Bryant and LeBron James, look up at someone like Stallone who worked his ass off for years to be where he's at. Worked his ass off for years to be where he's at and then finally he found that opening and he took it. He took a chance. He said, no, I'm going to play Rocky. And it worked. Instead of being laughed out of the room and shoved out of there, we're going to do your movie anyway. We'll buy your screenplay, whatever. We'll make another boxing movie and we'll cast Ryan, we'll cast Ryan O'Neal or Burt Reynolds in it. No one's going to make your movie. It's not what happened. And that's why I always have a special place for Stallone in my heart. As well as other actors like the late, great Chris Reed. You know, all the great things that he did even after his accident are just some of the most amazing things you could ever ask a man or a human being to do. So, I look up to those people. Those, those, those are my heroes. So, Stallone is definitely one of my heroes. And I just, I think that's that's a tra trajectory he should take his career. He should go that. He should go that way. A little more dramatic. Give him more flexibility. And give him ability to still act, you know. And then eventually maybe get into directing dramatic films. Because I know he's capable. Copland proved that. And he's good at directing drama. A lot of his rock film, the Rocky sequels he did, there were dramatic scenes. I thought he did a really good job directing, like in Rocky Three and so forth. So he can he can direct drama too. I think he's a very multifaceted person. You know, a man who's working in Hollywood. There are very many of them. He can write, he can direct, and he can act. Don't have a lot of those working in Hollywood nowadays. He's one of the last of a dying breed. Not only in that regard with the three, you know, the, the triple threat, but also of the action hero. One of the last of a dying breed. And so I don't want him to completely die off. So I think if he has to just change his trajectory and become more of a dramatic actor, I'd be fine with that. I think that's where he should take his career. I think that's what he's thinking about. I think he should get the chance to do that Edgar Allan Poe movie he's been on the do for so many years. He's obviously passionate about it. He's a very intelligent man. Don't let his looks fool you. Don't let his slurs fool you either. He's a very intelligent and passionate man who's written some very inspirational and amazing dialogue in his movies. Rocky Balboa has some of the best dialogue I've honestly ever seen. It's definitely the scene where he talks to his son. He tells him about life. That's a that's a that's a a quote that I still tell to myself to this day. If there's if there's if I'm ever feeling bad or there's some I feel like something's going wrong in my life, you know, even I, you know after my car accident, I you know I just kept thinking about things like that, like that quote from Rocky Balboa. You know, life isn't all sunshine and rainbows. It's not about how hard you hit; it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. It's about how much you can take and keep moving forward. And, you know, life is a very mean and nasty place. Beat you to your knees if you let it. And, of course, that's before the whole thing. But I think the moving forward thing is the one that I remember the most. 
It's not about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit. I got hit by that damn car pretty hard. And I made a mistake. But I moved forward. And I took it. So, that is, I think, what Salone delivers. Just really great inspirational dialogue and writing. And he's an inspirational man with an inspirational life. So, yeah, enough of my Salone, you know, love fist. Let's see what else these other news is, news we have here. Um, excuse me for, um, you know, sip on my nose and so forth, stuff like that. The allergies are acting up a little bit. But, um, New Exodus Gods and Kings poster reveals a golden look at Christian Bale's Moses. Uh, he just looks like the same as he has in every other movie, to be honest. He looks like he did in Out of the Furnace. Just a little bit of a shorter haircut. Military is making real Iron Man suits. Good luck. Transformer Age of Extinction is already China's biggest film of all time. Pathetic. Conjuring spinoff with Annabelle secures a release date. I don't know. I really like The Conjuring, but I don't know about a spinoff with Annabelle the doll. I really don't. I like the Gordon's Gavin extended trailer, but I wouldn't say it's perfect. I really don't want to say anything that's perfect. Kevin Smith says the Weinstein's Press and Quirks 3 reveals plans for a Tusk spinoff. Why a spinoff on Tusk? That's a stupid idea. Why? Stop making movies while you're high in goddamn pot, Kevin. Make a Kirk Clerks 3 and retire. Because this shit is stupid. I'm gonna turn Justin the my movie's gonna have some rich guy turn Justin Long into a walrus. That's the I, the plot of Tusk. It's stupid. Summer's domestic box office is down 20% from last year. Good! I hope it goes down even further so Hollywood will stop making lazy-ass fucking movies. Start giving a shit again about what they release instead of dumping shit that should be direct-to-video in theaters. Sylvester Stallone highlights a huge bizarre cast and trailer for Reach Me. I saw that, but it does seem kind of random. Trailer's not necessarily the best edited in terms of the plot, but there's a huge cast. Tom Berenger is in it, Stuart Stallone. I'm kind of curious about that movie, though. Ant-Man, I don't care about Ant-Man. Very special Star Wars screen is planned for George's oldest movie theater. Yeah, but here's the catch. If you want to see the film that started it all, Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope, the original print of the original edition, you got to pay 75 bucks. You also got to be in Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, don't have the original cut in good quality yet on DVD and Blu-ray, but fuck it, we'll, we'll release it in theaters in a special Star Wars screening at Georgia's oldest movie theater and you better, you gotta pay 75 bucks for it I don't know who's to blame, George Lucas whoever the fuck is blamed for it it's bullshit Lucas will forever ever, until the day that he finally decides to let Disney, whoever, who, Disney who owns Lucasfilm now release the original films and have them in the best quality available that fucking additions and shit. Until he does that, I will forever disdain the man. Forever. Till the end of time. Because I've never seen someone so arrogant. I've never seen someone so... I, I'm just trying to think of the right word. Ungrateful. I've seen never seen somebody so ungrateful for... Their fame and their success, as George Lucas says, you are not the reason, main only reason Star Wars became a huge phenomenon. Your original script was, quite frankly, pretty bad. So you had good writers who rewrote it for you and made it better. You didn't direct Empire Strikes Back, which a lot of people find is the best Star Wars movie. Irvin Kershner did. You didn't direct Return of the Jedi. Richard Marquant did. So, you did direct the prequels, which all sucked, in my opinion. A lot of people point to it as the worst Star Wars movies. You did direct the first movie, 
I'll give you that. But what I'm saying is, this is a man who when Star Wars came out, he was so confident it was not going to do anything. It was going to bomb. And he went with his friend, Steven Spielberg at the time, Steven Spielberg, and went to Hawaii and made a bet with Steven Spielberg, which of course he regrets now. Spielberg said, I'll have a little bit of the profits, which Spielberg still gets. Because Lucas was dumb enough and had no hope. He had no hope in A New Hope. Or what it was just called, Star Wars. He had no hope in Star Wars. So this is the man now who is so ungrateful. And it's not surprising to me because he had no hope for Star Wars from the beginning. Then it became a surprise success. It became a worldwide phenomenon. And the reason why he has made all this money, the reason why he has made billions, the reason why he has set for life, the reason why he even has a legacy is because of the people who paid to see Star Wars. The people who went and saw Star Wars. And you know what? which Star Wars those people saw? They saw the original Star Wars. They saw the Star Wars that came out in 1977. They saw the Emperor Strikes Back that came out in 1980. They saw the Return of the Jedi in 1983. They did not see the special editions. They did not... That's not how your legacy was built. That's not how you became a worldwide known name. That's not how you became a household name, George. Georgie Porgy. That's not how you became what you are known today. If it wasn't for the success of Star Wars, there wouldn't be a trilogy. There wouldn't be Star Wars Episode 7. There wouldn't be... George Lucas would not be as big as he is now. There would be no Lucasfilm. There probably would be no Industrial Light Magic. There would be... You would just be known as the guy who directed American Graffiti and THX 1138, pretty much. It's that guy. Did a few decent movies back in one decent movie and one really boring cult, you know, student film. That's it. You wouldn't have a legacy. So that's what pisses me off about George Lucas the most is that he's so arrogant and so selfish. And so self-centered. And so just completely oblivious to why he is what he is now. Because of the people who paid their hard-earned money to see the original versions of the original Star Wars trilogy. There's no arguing that. It's a fact. That's why he is a billionaire. That's why people even remember his goddamn name. But he just consistently just buffs them off. Day in and day out. And that's bullshit. Even Spielberg, as bad as he is, from what I've seen in some things, at least he acknowledges he is what he is thanks to the people who go and see his movies. Spielberg doesn't refuse to release original visions of movies. He might refuse to talk about Poltergeist and the story behind it. But he doesn't flatly refuse to release the original version of E.T. Because eventually he did that. I made a mistake. Special edition. Tried to be like George Lucas and I ruined it. And he even admitted it. George Lucas never admitted. George Lucas never admitted that he did anything wrong. So... He just made another special edition on the Blu-ray with more fucking added stupid shit. Like, better going, no, no, in the Return of the Jedi. So he just made it worse. Said it better. I could go on for hours about George Lucas. Maybe I'll do a whole other video about it. But that's why. That man, forever, until he finally gives permission or admits that he was wrong, and show some goddamn respect for the fans and for the films that made him 
who he is today, I will forever call that man out. I will forever disdain him. And I have every right to do so. And I'm not the only one. There are legions of people like me. We want the original Star Wars trilogy in the original format, in the original way that it was originally seen back when they originally came out. And that seems to be such an unbelievably tall task for some goddamn reason. There's no other goddamn movie franchise, there's no other movie I could think of that has that issue. And that's the issue with Star Wars. It's because George Lucas is selfish, he's self-centered, and he has no respect for the people who made him who he is today. And he refuses to admit that he made a mistake, and he's just going to sit on it, sit his fat ass on the special edition, on the original version of Star Wars. Maybe Lucasfilm could do something about it, maybe with 20th Century Fox. No, he'll probably find some way to cock block it. It won't happen until the day he dies. And that probably won't happen either because they'll have some relative as a his also throw it in a bolt or burn it. We'll never see it because this man will never admit that he was wrong. And maybe he will. I will be surprised the day that he does. But, goddamn it. It's hard to believe that a man who has done so much good for the for the realm of cinema and film can be so fucking ungrateful. It's unbelievable. Anyway, let's go back to the rest of the news. So, Transformers Bruce says no G.I. Joe crossover is planned yet. Yeah, yeah, because it's dumb. I didn't see that. Guy Pierce almost turned down Iron Man three. You should have. Sorry. You sucked. A great, mo great movie, my ass. Way to feel that way. If you if you feel that way, Guy Pierce, that's cool. If there are other people who feel that way, that's fine. I'm not one of them. Next like morning, days of future past extended version. I haven't seen the film yet. I don't know what to say. Gone Girl trailer. I saw it. Looked good. I'll give it a look sometime. I really like David Fincher's work. My opinion: David Fincher is Christopher Nolan before Christopher Nolan. David Fincher's direction. Is Christopher Nolan? I don't want. To, Christopher Nolan's not a bad director. That's what I want to be clarify here. But he's not the greatest director of all time. And let's stop acting like he's revolutionary because there's not a goddamn thing he's done in any of his movies that I've never seen before in a David Fincher film or a Michael Mann movie. He's not that revolutionary. That's the problem I have. He's a great director. He's good at what he does, but he's not a game changer, and he's not a revolutionary director because his style. Is in my opinion not very unique. I've did the opening of Dark Knight. Oh, it's very unique. No, I saw that in the Heat. Okay, I've seen it before. It's not unique. It's only unique if you've never seen the Heat or you've never seen movies by Ridley Scott. If you've never seen David Fincher flicks, then maybe you think it's unique, but it's not. So I don't understand why no one continuously is praised as one of the most revolutionary directors of all time. Because his movie, Batman movies were successful? Do you think it really was Nolan himself that made the Batman franchise so successful? He's not the 100% sole reason why that franchise was successful. That franchise was successful, not 100%, but about maybe 50%. Maybe it goes 50-50. Maybe it goes 50% Nolan and 50% the fact that it's a Batman movie. If you directed a movie that was just called you know, Vigilante Rises, nobody would, uh, it might get some good critical claim, but it wouldn't be as successful of a trilogy as the Batman trilogy he did was, because it was the Batman trilogy. Just saying. So anyway, don't care about Fantastic Beasts, Wizard, whatever, Wizard World, Wizarding, don't give a shit. Mark Wahlberg gonna be the new Mix Six Million Dollar Man. Please, no, I don't want to see... I mean, I will never be able to differentiate from his normal form, like his normal human form and his robot form. I won't be able to tell the difference because his acting is that robotic. It'll be like, what is he going to be? What? No. What? No. I think it's a Transformer. Melissa Vincent, the only non superhero movie to cross 600 million. Pathetic. Of course, a Disney movie. 
Not surprising since Disney movies are always popular, but that's the only non superhero movie to cross six hundred million in two thousand fourteen. Yep. Not not uh not Edge of Tomorrow. Nope, nobody saw that movie. Although it deserves six hundred million, but nope, nobody saw that movie. Except everybody I know. But other than that, almost nobody. Ask people on the street. Looks good. Then why don't you go see it? I want to see something else. We'll, we'll. Sorry, I just, just really liked that movie. And I thought it deserved better. You know. Not the only one. A lot of critics felt the same way too. Vince Franco sued over his new whatever movie. I don't care about this. Jimi Hendrix biopic. Eh, I don't know. Might be interesting. Tin Jiang joins the cast of Ride Alone 2. So the, the the fucking already annoying cast, you know, got a more annoying. Great. Fuck Ride Alone 2. Didn't serve a goddamn sequel. And neither I I did first film didn't deserve a hundred million anyway. It's direct to video shit. Max Steel. I haven't seen the new cartoon. But I like the way the this suit looks in the practical movie they're doing. And I remember the 2000s cartoon. I had some of the toys. The CGI one. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for a trailer for Max Steel. I'm kind of curious about that. Fuck Shasha Baron Cohen after I found out that the stuff that he did with Borat. He never told anybody about anything. And he did property damage. And... He didn't pay for it. Yeah. All that kind of shit. No. Why Zack Snyder hasn't filmed the Wonder Woman scenes yet? Because she's working out because she's not buffed and ripped yet enough. Zack Snyder. I don't know, man. I really liked Watchmen. I just, I don't know. Metro beer cans from Jaws are coming back. So you can crush it like Quint. So? Pacific Rim will be very different from the first film. Will it just be um, more robot? Would it actually be a lot more robot fighting? Is that what it's going to be? And not stupid plot about building a goddamn dumbass wall and a shitty Top Gun ripoff? That'd be a good idea. Gaby, wavy, PG-13 written should be abolished because it's rated R. It's not rated R. I'm going to be the one guy who's going to say... I don't. I really. I don't. I don't care. I really don't think it needs to be eliminated. It forces MPA to look at content differently. Maybe the MPA. What we should abolish before we. We should abolish the MPAA. We should keep the rating system, but abolish the MPAA, because the MPA is the ones that being that are being stupid. Uh. You know that's why you have movies like Kids of Our Summer that gets rated R because it has a few R you know, swear words in it. Because the NPA is stupid. That's why I have movies that have to get re-edited. Like Hard Target and Torn to Shreds. Because the NPA is stupid. And then also doesn't really tell the director what they want to remove. So they just end up having to fucking play a game of, you know, cut the film with a random, random, random intervals. Just to appease the almighty MPAA. The MPAA is the one that should be abolished, not the rating system. The rating system is not the problem. The MPAA is the problem. They will always be the problem. You get rid of the PG-13 rating, you'll have more movies that are rated R. That doesn't help at all. That just means you have more movies that will be rated R. And more movies that are PG that should be PG. So you'll have the same goddamn problem. If not a little bit worse. Get rid of the MPAA. And you have movies that should be R. Or R. And you have movies that should be PG-13. PG-13. And also. I think we're adult. We've grown up enough. As adults and as human beings. We don't need the MPA anymore. We don't. We don't. We can handle it. I can handle a few swear words in my movie with kids. I can handle it. And kids can handle it. Because they've seen a lot of swear words. Now, when it comes to 
drug abuse and sex and nudity and gore and uh, if I okay yeah I, all right but swear words kids can handle the guy some freaking swear words okay I've seen kids young younger than me way younger than me swearing like sailors lately it's just not necessarily the best thing but it's not that far fetched so I disagree with you Gabe I'm sorry PG thirteen ratings is not what should be abolished it's the MPAA. It's not just because Expendables 3 should have been R. It's because the NPA has done this stupid shit all the goddamn time. And they've been doing it since the beginning of time. And they're the ones that should be abolished. Especially considering that they still don't get a goddamn clue. And they're full of old farts who still think we can't handle a nipple on a, tr on a fucking poster. Oh my god, my eyes are exploding because of a nipple. Give me a break. It's a nipple. I never understood this. I never understood it. it it's just something I think that socially we ha we as human beings in America have become, and even as in societies around the world, it's just a habit that you from the beginning when you get out of the womb, it's women's nipples. No, that's not allowed. That's unbelievable. Oh my God, that's that's gross or or offensive. Men's, men's nipples, nobody gives a shit. Just because there's a little bit of fat in the nipples, we don't blur out guys' man tits. See what I'm talking about? We're not upset at man. We're not going to, MPA's not going to censor some chubby, you know, with fucking picture of Kevin James without a shirt. They're not going to do that. I think they had that on Here Comes the Boom. They're not going to censor that. Maybe they should. Nobody wants to see man tits, but uh, see what I'm talking about? It's, it's double standard. N nobody, nobody gives a shit about men's nipples, but women's nipples are like, oh my goodness. It's part of the human body. I don't get it. I never have. I guess even as a kid, I'm like, eh, I, I, I've always been with the guy on the fringe on the outside being like, it's a big deal. It's not going to hurt you. It's not like you see the nip, a woman's nipple and it's going to bite your face off. I don't get it. Oh, that neck crack is too loud. I'm going to be haunted for years with this. That's why the NBA should be abolished because they rate movies the way they are for stupid reasons. Here's Jurassic Park music sung by goats. No. And nobody's been waiting for a fucking Jurassic Park music sung by goats. Jurassic Goats waste a fucking time and it probably has millions upon billions of views. Just like this stupid Kickstarter campaign where some moron said, I'm going to make a bowl of potato salad. Pledge, please, and I will send you bowls of potato salad that I will make myself. I'm not a cook, so it might not be that good, but please help me make potato salad you want to know how much money that guy made seventy thousand dollars seventy thousand dollars was raised on Kickstarter for some guy's Kickstarter page for making a bowl of potato salad I'm not laughing I'm not I don't think it's funny or you just can't take a joke that's stupid that's not funny that's a fucking waste of money nobody should be giving getting 70 grand the equivalent of a lottery ticket a winning lottery ticket for saying you're gonna make a bowl of potato salad on kickstarter that's why kickstarter in my opinion has quickly become a fucking joke because people oh, i'm gonna laugh out of that i'll donate oh, that's the funniest thing i've heard all week you gonna make a bowl of potato salad. Ha! I'm like, I like potato salad. You're like, what the fuck? Seriously, people are stupid. And I know that. I know that people are stupid. I know people are. Not everybody is, but definitely our people are stupid because it has to be true because they're paying, giving some guy 70 grand to make potato salad. But you have good projects. Like a good friend of mine. Damon Sage had a really cool idea for a horror film called Aneurysm that nobody helped him make. You have a 
Tur Tina Mins is a Turtles fan film where Raphael's and rated R violence is going to kick some ass. But no, it doesn't even get funded and it get barely any money because its entire fan base turns it turns its back on it because the director decided to make a teaser trailer that he had limited funds because he didn't have the money to do what he wanted to do. So it looked kind of cheap. But because he did that, they automatically thought that the whole movie was going to be like that, like a bunch of fucking morons. And then at the same time, some people would be petty and cheap and I'll not give money because, oh, oh, it's illegal. You can't really sell, you know, uh, copyrighted material. And I would want a case. So I would want a DVD case. I don't, you know, I'd like an actual physical copy, you know, because I'm a greedy, cheap motherfucker. See, do you understand what I'm talking about? But those projects don't get a single fucking dime or to get barely nothing but a guy who goes on fucking Kickstarter and says he's going to make a bowl of potato salad he gets seven grand. Somebody who wanted to redo and make a recreation for some goddamn reason of Shaq Fu, the video game, so people could play it. Why we need a redo of that piece of shit? It's just a reproduction of Shaq Fu. That got funded? A reproduction of one of the shittiest video games of all time. But not these projects that have a lot of passion and people behind them. Who give a shit about what they're doing. No. We'll fund shit like a potato bowl. A fucking potato salad. I know he said. I'm sponsoring a big event. Everyone who, who, who sponsored. Can come in and have some potato salad. Everyone's like. Oh you should have. You're just mad because you didn't think of it first. No. I'm, I'm just mad because this is fucking pathetic. This is so sad. This is just absolutely making humankind look like the biggest, dumbest fucking people on the goddamn planet. It makes us look so goddamn stupid. Especially to everyone, to the people who are starving, who could use more than just a bowl of potato salad, can't even barely make a fucking dime, and this guy goes on quick Kickstarter and makes a joke poll, oh, 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 potato salad for everybody, gets 70 grand. Gotta love the world you're living in, where some guy can just do some stupid idea that he swore, oh, I'm just gonna do it as a joke. You know what? Don't waste your goddamn time on Kickstarter. Good pro good only projects that have a fucking meaning to them, that have a reason to be funded, should be allowed on Kickstarter. After this debacle, Kickstarter should go on and make it I don't care. I don't care how people feel about this. This is how I feel about it. I start censoring Kickstarter. I'd say you are not allowed to fund anything that is as stupid as trying to make a bowl of potato salad. Okay? No more of these stupid, useless Kickstarter campaigns. The only time any kind of Kickstarter campaign should be used is for a genuine purpose. I can go to a goddamn store and I can buy some potato salad. I can't see a Ninja Turtles movie where Raphael is an R-rated revenge action vigilante flick. I can't see that. So I'd have to kickstart that. You got jack shit. Okay, I can't see that, but I can get potato salad. That's not a hard thing to do. But 70 grand, that's the problem. It's not that it was just maybe just a little bit, okay, but 70 grand. Just because, oh, that's funny. Oh, I'm like, you should be a stand up comedian. Why? There's nothing funny about that. I don't get why it's funny. It's not ironic. It just. I'm funny. Oh, that's hilarious. Why is that hilarious? Because you're stupid enough to give some guy money to make a bowl of potato salad? That's funny to you? Wow, your life must be fucked up. I'm sorry. I'm not laughing. I almost want to cry. Seventy fucking thousand dollars for some fucking moron on Kickstarter. Because he's going to make a bowl of potato salad. I'm going to make potato salad. Fuck. Anyway, I gotta get off that subject. But god damn it, man. Silver seventy grand. Fuck. Should give every single dime of that to charity. Not somebody saying that he should keep it. No, he shouldn't keep it. Doesn't deserve seventy grand for a fucking potato salad. Just give that a charity to the homeless or whatever so they can actually get food. Okay? 
What about the people who ask for potato salad? Okay, give them potato salad that you make yourself. Which open some pretty damn good potato salad and then give the rest to charity. Maybe keep a little bit for yourself. Okay, maybe that's not a problem. Profit off of some stupid people, but because there's a lot of people, inventors and so forth around this world who do that all the damn not all the damn time. Hollywood Hollywood does it too. But I, I just it just by of the mind. I cannot believe it when I saw that. Sell for seventy grand for a goddamn bowl of potato salad. Unfucking believable. Unbelievable. You don't pay seventy grand for a joke that's stupid. It's fucking depressing. Anyway, Nick Cannon is hoping to play Richard Pryor in Biopic. Here's why Edgar Tomorrow went with a happier ending. Because Tom Cruise actually said, no, I don't like the depressing ending. I want a happier ending. And I'm glad he fought for it. So the movie's a lot better that way. Superman looks badass in, in Photoshop filters. Ah, it's so dark and grungy looking and fake. I'm not impressed. I'm not. It just... You're just giving me the rape eyes. I just... No, fuck. Look forward to it all you want. I'm not. Pirates 5, uh, fewer monsters. Buckheimer updates on National Treasure 3 and Bad Boys 3. I've ever seen Bad Boys 3 ever than the other two they're mentioning. Pirates 5, enough already. That's really what the tagline should be. Pirates of the Caribbean 5, enough already. Or Pirates of the Caribbean 5, we don't give a shit what you think anymore. <laughs> we're, we're making another one. Fast and Furious 7 gets an early release date. It's coming out in August instead. Boba Fett movie. I never understood why Boba Fett was considered so badass. I don't. He's cool looking, alright. But he got his ass kicked in two seconds flat. Two seconds. Two fucking seconds. And he's in the Scarlet Pit. We're in the car. I'm not counting the goddamn comic book. It's not. I would not consider that continuity. If you're going to consider that continuity, you're going to consider all the books continuity, and it's all fucking confusing, and there's all these different contradictions and shit. But anyway, Boba Fett's a cool character. It might make a cool movie. So I'll, I'll, I'll see what happens with it. But I just never understood why he was up there with some of the coolest characters of all time. I'm sorry. He kicks that less ass than the Wraith does. Tilda Swinton's Crazy M.A. She's going to be David Bowie in a movie. Tina Fey denies she's making Hocus Pocus 2. Oh, that sucks. I knew that was going to happen. That was a deny. Denied! But I do like Hocus Pocus 2. I mean, I like the idea of Hocus Pocus 2. And I do like Hocus Pocus as well. So, interested in seeing a sequel. John Cena's gonna be in a comedy. Just levels three of PG thirteen, and I'm not freaking out. Crazy, huh? I'm gonna be honest. The Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. I haven't seen it in forever. I watched it again recently, but I never hated. I used to. I, I don't remember ever hating that movie. But I saw it when I was a kid, so I don't know. I haven't seen it since then, but I don't remember ever hating that movie. So we'll see. We'll see what I think about the film later. Enchanted 2, I remember the first film I saw it. Oh, it was alright. Why? We don't need a G.I. Joe 3. We need that. Last one sucked ass. Did a more shaky cam. Bring back a shitty John M. Chu. Can't fucking direct. Horrible Bosses 2 teaser trailer. I saw the teaser trailer. I like the first one. Looks like it might be fun. But it's just a teaser trailer, so it's not much. I saw the trailer for this St. Vincent. Looks really good. I really want to see that. That's another film I'd have to say I really want to see. Bill Murray looks like he's returned to form in terms of serious, kind of serious, but still some comedic acting role, playing this mentor for this kid. It looks like, you know, really, really heartwarming and looks like a great film. David Ayer no longer involved with the Commander remake. Just kill it. Just kill the goddamn thing. Kill it with fire. Just throw a pipe in its at throw a pipe in its fucking chest. Shoot it between the balls. So we can let up some steam forever. I saw the trailer for the Skeleton Twins too with Bill Hader and Christian Wig. I'm curious about that actually. I saw the trailer for it and 
I, comedy drama is not the biggest fan, but I like the cast and I, I like the the idea that it had this sort of '80s music vibe, and the fact that they started singing a duet of, um, "Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now" from Mannequin. I I I that really put a smile on my face because I really love that song. So that was fun. Uh, Pierce Brosnan, Ready Expendables Four. Already, movie hasn't even come out yet. You think it's gonna there's gonna be a fourth one? Hundred million for Transformers Four. Yep, four, the fourth installment. Same shit, same goddamn franchise. Hundred million. That's pathetic. The first movie to make a hundred million dollars in its opening weekend in the United States this year is Transformers Four. A movie where there's barely any of the Dinobots that were advertised in the goddamn trailers, and a Transformers movie that's two and a half hours long, over two and a half hours long, actually. Overkill. Just like that. I don't do Star Trek Trilogy. We don't need a reboot of Stargate. We don't need it as a Stargate movie. We had multiple TV shows. We had the 1994 film. We don't need another one. I don't want to see another Stargate film. I think the first film did it just fine. The Stargate SG-1 did a good job. I don't, I'm, I don't really care about another Stargate movie. What else are you going to do? You're going to go... Some other people were like, I don't like Egypt. I know my friend Matt did not like the idea that they just went to Egypt in Stargate, but I was fine with that because I like Egypt. But I've always liked the ancient Egypt. I always found ancient Egypt fascinating ever since, since I was a kid. But um, we're going to take it in the Middle Ages? I don't, I don't understand. There's no need for another Stargate movie. Earth the Echo, I heard it was like a friendly space alien movie or robot. I... I don't know. I haven't seen it. 40X movie theater. It stole my idea that I had since I was a kid. The idea of having smells and a chair that moves around and water spraying at you. I had that idea since I was a kid. Ever since I went to Universal Studios and saw the Terminator um, 3D ride. Is that really fucking news? Mike Reyes? These movies are going to be cut from Netflix streaming. Okay? Sucks to be the people who have Netflix streaming who these movies are going to be cut from. Rocky IV. Um, but you know what? I can, I can watch Rocky IV anytime I want because I have the Blu-ray set. Because I'm not beholden to Netflix. Tintin 2, okay. His Clark Kent. Well, I hope he's not running around with no glasses, because I swear to God, if he has no glasses as Clark Kent, everyone will know he's God. I mean, it was stupid. They don't know he's Superman. They should already know he's Superman. Well, the reason why is because he has this sort of fuddy-duddy sort of personality. So they would never really look at Clark and his bumbling personality as someone who would be Superman. If he's just running around, if he's just going around the Daily Planet looking like a buffed-up, you know, GQ model, and he's not having that persona for Clark Kent, I don't buy people not seeing that he's Superman. But maybe that's the point. Maybe in the new movie... Hey, they already know he's Superman. So he has no secret identity. Might as well just do that. Would not be surprised if that's the route they went. And then fans of Superman would probably, a good amount of them, would just give it a pass. Be like, well, that's different. That's good. About time for a change. Yeah, change something that's been the same way it's been for so, for huh, how many decades? But, no, it's fine. It's fine. Terminator 5 may drop Genesis from its title. Okay. Alright. But you made it worse, actually. I didn't think they could possibly make it worse to make it sound like a goddamn video game. But, you know, Terminator Genesis sounds like a goddamn video game. Makes me want to play Sega Genesis. Makes me want to play Robocop vs. Terminator on the Sega Genesis. But, just dropping Genesis and the, and calling it Terminator, that's even worse. That's even worse. Even worse. Might as well just borrow the ta borrow the fucking tagline from the video game Dawn of Fates. It's better than Genesis. That's better than fucking Terminator. 
Michael Bay and Transformers hate critics. Let them hate. Yeah, let them hate. Yep, he's right. Because you still see the goddamn movie. And you give it a hundred million dollars. So, seems like Michael Bay's untouchable. Indie Circus is a part on Age of Teltron. Okay, Audition is getting a remake. Why? That movie's overrated anyway. I don't want it to just be a shitty, shittier version of a shitty movie. In my opinion, I'm sorry, I'm not impressed by Audition, and I never was. Just an excuse to show some hot Asian chick torture some poor dude. That's it. That's it. The Storm, I saw the trailer for that, Into the Storm. Okay, maybe, you know, but it's pretty much just another twister, but maybe, I don't know. Eh, we'll see. I don't know if I'd see it in the theater. Here you know how fucking desperate Hollywood is. Let's remake Victory! Uh, a Stallone film nobody gave a shit about when it came out, but let's remake that. Why? Just fucking call it something else or find a different idea. Why Why are you starting to remake movies that nobody cared about? Well, at least maybe remaking something that nobody cared about, making it a little bit better, is a little bit better than remaking a movie that has no business remade. So, okay. But, Doug Lehman, please don't do that as your follow-up to Edge of Tomorrow. That would just be sad. Then again, just tomorrow was not a hit, so maybe he that's the only job he can get, which is even worse. Even more sad. James Bond 24 orders rewrites, which delays production. Good. Have some I'm glad they have some idea of quality for the franchise. If it's crap, we're rewriting it. We're not letting it stay this way. Not seeing the Dracula one told trailer. I've already seen Dracula Begins for Dracula. It's called Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, as the beginning of the movie set it up from fine and well enough with Vlad the Baylor and the soul sort of thing like that. So, that's what they're kind of going for here with Dracula Untold. So, I'll probably just stick with Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Star Trek 3, return the franchise's roots and head to deep space. Good, finally. <laughs> So if Grim 2 is officially happening, boo, I don't care. Why does Fantastic Four need a found footage reel? Because the guy who directed it, directed a found footage superhero movie. It doesn't mean it needs a found footage reel. There's absolutely no reason for that to have a found footage reel. David Duchovny wants to make another X-Files movie. Yeah, maybe I'd like to see one, but I want to believe sucks so much ass that I'd rather you not. And I like David Duchovny. Just rather not see another one. The chances are it'd be even worse. Jason Patrick gets his own taken, fights Bruce Willis and Trevor the Prince. Great. Oh, great. John McClane. Bruce Willis is the villain now in some fucking direct video. It's got probably direct video. Action thriller. Taken ripoff with, of all people, Jason Patrick. Lovely. Batman Superman adding Scoot McNary in a mystery role. Karate Kid 2 loses his director, gains new writers. Why? We don't need a sequel to fucking Karate Kid 2. I mean, the fucking remake. 1984 movies that don't get enough credit. Top secret. Okay. Bachelor Party. Alright. Buckaroo Bonsai. Yeah, okay. Repo Man. Okay, yeah, Gabe, alright. Popo Green. Uh, I haven't seen it. I've heard good things about it, so okay. Teachers. I liked it. Huh. Body Double. Yeah. Blood Simple. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Johnny Dangerously. Oh, uh, yeah. Streets of Fire. Yeah. Well, Rob. Oh, 
that was actually a really good list. Nice job. Probably something I forgot that I can't think of at the top of my head, but from 84, but yeah. Nice job there, Gabe Toro and Sean O'Connell. Insidious Chapter 3. Never thought that would be a fucking trilogy. But it is because the horror genre is fucking dead. Unless you go direct to video. And then it's still pretty much dead. Because there's like maybe a couple handful of good movies. It's sad, but I think that genre has been run into the goddamn ground and it just doesn't have anything left in it. It's just a desiccated corpse. They're just keeping trying to resuscitate with every method available. And for some reason it just it wakes up for just a little bit and then dies again. In a continuous just cycle. Never ending cycle of never ending death. Horror genre is nowhere close to what it once was. Not even remotely close. Horror genre still makes money, but because of diehard horror fans. Who are just seeing anything horror. Because it's all that's there. But it could be so much better. Really could be. Original Gremlins poster reveals an Amblin, awesome Amblin Easter egg. Oh yeah, it's on his belt buckle. It's kind of cool. I know there's going to be a new Gremlins Blu-ray in, in December. Just in time for Christmas. With the feature, with new features and everything, which is great. I'd like to pick that up. Like Gremlins. Still nothing for Gremlins 2, but you know what Yep, still threatened of retaliation about the interview. I saw the trailer, look, it might be fun. But, you know, Tim Jong-un can't take a jack joke. And, uh... Huh, Tom Cruise rumored to be in episode 7. Shane Black's new Predator movie won't be a reboot, it will be a sequel. Okay. Still, okay, my excitement is a little bit higher than it was in the last time I did the video. I'm not as upset now. But I'm just not optimistic. Not very optimistic. The trailer is going to have to really blow me away if it does get made. That's all I got to say. And I will still be very leery because Predator's trailer was, I remember liking, but it was a fucking lie. So, um, with because there were a bunch of lights on Adrian Brody that weren't even in the movie. So, we'll see. A new Mad Max movie with Tom Hardy and Charlize Theron. It's pretty much a reboot, even though it calls itself a sequel. But it doesn't even have Mel Gibson, which I know he's crazy now, but... Don't get it. Don't understand. I now wait for a trailer, I guess. Iron Man 3, Shane Black, once Chris Hemsworth, the star, and Doc Savage. A property nobody really remembers. It's another one that the Lone Ranger will probably flop. Unless it gets Chris Hemsworth or Hemsworth, then maybe it might be hit. Because people will just see it because the guy who played Thor is in it. Tom Cruise rumored a cameo in Star Wars Episode 7. I don't know what he would cameo as. That's why it's just called a rumor. There's not much substantial to it at all. Fury trailer is Scary Cat. I can really good. I haven't seen it yet. War Games remake. Yep. The remake in War Games. So they got some guy who directed an upcoming time travel thriller, Project Almanac. Screenwriter behind Erased. That's some great... <laughs> That's some really great credentials there. Who are the people who think should replace Matthew Broderick? How about you just don't make a War Games remake? How about that? Just do a different movie. That'd be a better idea. Just don't do it. How about that? And now we get to what I talked about before. John Cleese, new James Bond films, one fatal flaw. And that is it. That is all, folks. Thanks for watching this latest episode of Talking Cinema. Sorry for a few other distractions you might have heard now and then. And, um... 
Sorry for the length if it's a little bit too long, but I missed the week. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys had a good time, and I will see you guys later.